So today there are 1.8 billion Muslims on this planet, which means in every corner of the planet there is a Muslim somewhere, which means the world population have become familiar with us, they know about us, they have heard of us, and it's easier to be a Muslim than it used to be in the early days of Islam. So the first people to take up this call, for the first people to believe in this and accept this and embody this, they were not ordinary people. Like you needed a heart full of courage, a backward stamina, you, more than anything you needed to have clarity of vision that this path is so much better than the mess which we are used to. So one of those early visionaries, one of those early courageous hearts, one of those early people with stamina, unsurpassed in human history as a man by the name of Bilal ibn Rabah. And the hadith of ibn Mas'ud says of the first seven people to declare their faiths is this Bilal ibn Rabah. But Bilal wasn't like other people. Bilal was an Ethiopian slave enslaved in Mecca. So whilst other people had difficulties, Bilal's difficulty was multiplied exponentially because he was in a foreign land, he looked foreign, uh, and a slave on top of that, not a man of much influence, and now he has accepted a new faith, different to the faith of his masters. And imagine what's his biggest hope, biggest dream, biggest ambition of a slave. You would agree that their biggest aspiration, their highest achievement is one day I will be free from the shackles of bondage. Maybe my children will grow up as free men and free women. So now Bilal becomes a Muslim. Faith enters his heart and pretty quickly the taunting and the torture and the punishment starts. So Bilal radiallahu anhu bears the suffering. Bilal radiallahu anhu suffers for the truth and suffers for deen. When you suffer for the truth, when you bear difficulties for Allah, the only possible outcome is that Allah elevates you. So I want you to watch what happens to Bilal. So Bilal is there on the stones of Mecca being tortured and bashed. So Allah Rabbul Izza straight away fulfills his biggest dream. And the dream of a slave is emancipation to be set free. So Allah Rabbul Izza sent Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu go and purchase Bilal and then set him free. So Bilal radiallahu anhu became a free man. He got his biggest goal in life straight after he bore some difficulty for Allah. Emancipated, set free. And then his emancipation is not like any ordinary emancipation. You know, Allah Rabbul Azza could have sent any ordinary man to come and free Bilal. He could have sent, you know, even the disbelievers of Mecca, he could have put in their hearts to have some sympathy and empathy and rahmah and mercy for this man suffering and set him free. But Allah Rabbul Azza opts to send Abu Bakr Siddiq. And Abu Bakr by consensus is the greatest of creation after the prophets. You know, when you go to another country, usually people come to receive you at the airplane or at the airport. And based on who comes to the airport to pick you up is kind of an indication of your status. So if you're a prime minister, a prime minister comes to receive you. If you're a president, usually presidents come to receive you. So for Bilal radiallahu anhu, Allah Rabbul Izza sent Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Do you see when I say Allah elevates you, Allah elevated. And then the same Bilal who yesterday, just yesterday, these Arabs wouldn't sit with, wouldn't talk with, wouldn't eat with because they were way below him. He was an Ethiopian slave. Just the next day, after bearing this difficulty for Allah Rabbul Izza, the next day he is sitting on the sufra with the best of the sons of Adam. Ana Sayyidu Waladi Adam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gets to share the sufra with the Rasul of Allah. Is there honor beyond this? And through this gains the honor of companionship. He becomes a, a Sahabi. And subhanallah, today, centuries later, kings of Arabia will not call his name except to say first, radiyallahu anhim, or may Allah be pleased with him. Or Sayyiduna Bilal, our master Bilal. Do you see when Allah honors, he honors. And when you bear for Allah, Rabbul Izza, you bear for the deen Allah honors. And it didn't stop there. So the migration happened to Medina. 
and of all the companions, the confidant and the person entrusted by the Prophet وسلم, in proximity, you will notice in the ahadith is this Bilal. He was the treasurer of the Prophet. Many ahadith, Bilal give this person this much money from Baytul Mal. Bilal take this person, give him this much money from Baytul Mal. Why? Because entrusted by the Prophet, so a confidant of the Prophet Do you see honor? And then the time came where the mosque is built and the call for prayer needs to happen. So Allah Rabbul Izza of all creation chooses this Ethiopian, ex-Ethiopian slave to become the caller of the call for the Muslim prayer. So today, the call is made from millions, millions of masajid across the world, five times a day. And every time they're uttering the words that Bilal uttered first. So the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, whoever starts a righteous practice, he will get the reward of it and the reward of whoever does it after him till the day of judgment. So even today, whilst Bilal radiallahu anhu has died and is no more, still the rewards go into his account and still you revive and resuscitate his legacy in every salah because Allah Rabbul Izzah chose to honor him. And then Fatih Makkah came and the distinct honor not only to go inside the Kaaba but to climb on top of it and declare the Azan there. Do you see when I tell you that whoever bears difficulty for Allah's deen, whoever suffers for the religion of Allah, Allah Rabbul Izzah will do nothing but honor you. And then time passes in Medina and the Prophet Sallallahu one day tells him, Bilal, I heard your footsteps in Jannah. This world he got, the next world, the Prophet Sallallahu gives him the glad tidings, Bilal, I heard your footsteps in Jannah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu time passed and the Prophet passed away. And then Bilal radiallahu anhu reaches old age and now he's on his deathbed and the wife is sitting next to him and gripped by sadness because the husband is about to die and the companion of the Prophet is about to die and a sad moment. So she says, oh, what sadness. What sadness. I am about to become a widow. My husband's about to die. The companion of the Prophet is about to pass. So Bilal looks up and the clarity that Allah Rabbul Izzah gives him at the point of death. The peace and solace that Allah Rabbul Izzah has favored him with. Look at the utterance. He says, no, not a sad moment, a happy one. Just tomorrow, just after this little hurdle, I will be together with my friend again, with the Prophet and his companions. So you see, whoever suffers and bears difficulty for the religion of Allah, Allah Rabbul Izzah honors. So dear ones today, so you're a young Muslim girl who is in a university and you might be the only one or there's just a handful of you and you want to wear the scarf and uphold your, you know, your religion and then you see the society and no one's wearing it so it's difficult for you. And you might feel shy and you might feel nervous and you might feel uh, some daggers looking at you. Some people giving you the looks uncomfortable. But my dear sister, bear it. Bear it like a badge of honor so that you can say in the years to come to your little ones, your mom was the only Muslim girl in the university who never took a scarf off. That's a good badge to have. And you might be at a work environment and you might find it difficult to pray and there's no place or uh, people look and you feel uncomfortable and yet you find a little safe corner and, and do your duty and meet your obligation to God and you bear the difficulty. And you bear the discomfort, bear it. There's nothing but honor from that. May Allah Rabbul Izzah honor you, Allah elevate you, Allah guide you, Allah guard you.